In a previous video, I covered how to get Verus Miner up and running on your mobile phone. And today, we're actually going to be showing you a new method that you can pretty much set up and you'll actually get improved hash rate. Plus, you'll be able to manage everything remotely from the comfort of your PC. So what I have here is I have a phone I picked up on Prime Day. So this was one of the common deals. I think it was either $30 or $35 on Prime Day. So we're going to go ahead and get this opened up. And we're going to get this one set up. Now the first few steps will pretty much be the same as last time. Where we'll mainly just be uh, going through the setup screen. We're not going to enable Wi-Fi until we're through the setup screen. Then we're going to enable Wi-Fi. And then we will start with some configuration. So first thing is we're going to go ahead and power it on. Now these do have around 60% battery out of the box. So we don't need to really plug it in for the steps that we're going to be performing. Now this specific phone is branded as Simple Mobile. However, it's actually a track phone phone. So it's going to tell us there's a service provider update. We're going to go ahead and say OK. And it's basically going to apply the track phone update. And then it will probably reboot. And then we can proceed forward with the setup screens. Once it's rebooted, we can go ahead and walk through the setup screen. So we're going to hit start. And this specific phone, the menu options are a little bit different. You don't want to say agree to all. Just want to do the first two options. Uh, because the last one's going to send diagnostic data back. And then we're going to unselect uh, pretty much all of the permissions. Hit agree. And then it's going to prompt for Wi-Fi. We're going to say skip. And we're going to do don't copy. And our time's going to default to Shanghai. I'm going to switch this to central daylight. And our time's actually off right now. We got our date in. Hit next. And we want to turn off all of the services. Hit accept. And we're going to skip the protect phone. That's going to be our lock screen. And we don't want to install the one weather app. And we're going to skip Samsung account. We're going to skip that. And we're going to unselect both options on accept. Accept. Hit finish. And then we are going to let the phone kind of boot up into the OS. We're going to let it sit for a minute. And now we're going to connect to Wi-Fi. I'm just going to swipe down from the top. We're going to hold down Wi-Fi. And we're going to get this connected to Wi-Fi. Now, once it's connected to Wi-Fi, we are going to be accessing this remotely. So one of the things I like to do is give it a static IP. You don't have to do this, but when you're running a bunch of different devices on your network, it definitely helps you find the phone. So to do that, we're going to go back into the Wi-Fi settings. And then next to our Wi-Fi connection, we're going to hit the little settings cogwheel. And then we're going to expand view more. And that's going to kind of drop down this menu of all these settings. One of those settings is IP settings. You can switch out this from DHCP to static. And there you can kind of see the IP it already has. And for me, I'm going to start my phone farm at, uh, let's do 151. So we'll go ahead and set this device to 151, 192.168.1.151. And um, it's already pulling kind of the other defaults. We can go ahead and leave those in place. And if we hit save, 
now we're pretty much done with the phone setup for the most part. Uh, the only other thing we can do while we're on the device, we can do this remotely, but I like to do this on the device. And this isn't required, however, this is something that I do do on all my devices. As I go to settings, about phone, go to software info, we're going to be enabling developer mode. So we're going to get a build number and just keep tapping it until it says developer mode is enabled. And then we can go back a couple screens, we can go back to developer options. And I like to turn stay awake on. The reason I do this is whenever I walk by my phones, it's a quick glance to know everything is working. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hop on over to the computer and we're going to transfer a couple files over that's going to allow us to get the miner up and running, kind of get everything managed remotely. We're back at the computer and we're essentially going to be looking at a couple things here. And one is there's pretty much three steps to this. One is to run a VNC server on the phone so that we can remote into it. The second is going to be to install user land, which will allow us to run an Ubuntu terminal. And the third is to actually run the CLI miner. And so first thing we want to do is we're going to hop on over to the GitHub for droidvnc-ng and I'll link all these down in the description below. And if you want to read through all the features, you can do that. But essentially in the end, this will allow you to remote into your phone uh, as if you were standing right in front of your phone. And so we're going to go over to releases and we're going to download the latest APK. We're also going to do the same thing with user land. So we'll hop on over to the GitHub. We'll download the user land APK. And I already have those downloaded into a folder uh, along with a screen rotation. So if I mentioned this before with the AO3X, you need a screen rotation if you're going to put the if you want to flip it and have the charging port at the top, which is what I do. I've already plugged the phone in. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. So it's plugged in via USB and it has prompted me to allow access. We get the oh, 3S internal storage and then we're going to hit download. And let me go ahead and pop open another window. And we're going to drag all three files over to the device and at this point we're actually pretty much done with copying files over so now we're going to hop back on over to the phone and we're going to install all three of these uh, we don't really have to do a configuration uh, the only configuration we'll be doing is with the droid vnc one that's the most important one so let's go ahead and do that now. Back over at the phone, we're going to go ahead and unlock this. And we're going to swipe up. We're going to get a Samsung, My Files. And actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and enable dark mode. This specific phone didn't prompt us during the setup for dark mode. So we can easily do that. Swipe down, scroll to the right, activate dark mode. Easy peasy. Now let's go downloads, and here's all of the um, APKs we downloaded, and I'm going to start with a Droid VNC, this is the most important one, we're going to hit settings, and we need to allow my files, and then hit install, okay, we're not going to open that yet, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to install the other two files, now you can install these remotely if you want, but since I'm in front of the phone, just super easy to just get these installed now. Hit done. Screen rotate, install. Okay. Now all of those are installed. Now we can open Droid VNC. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to spin up a VNC server on the phone. So I'm going to leave the port as default of 5900. I'm not going to give it a password. You can if you want. And I'm not worried about an access key. Um, move cursors. I like to flip this on. It's up to you. Uh, file transfer you can turn on and off. But 
You will be able to transfer files to it remotely if you want um, using the VNC Viewer. And then we're going to hit start. And here it's going to tell us a few things. So to be able to remotely control your device, you need to enable accessibility. Do you want to enable it now? We're going to say yes. And then you want to say installed apps. Click Droid, click on, hit allow. Then you can do back, back again, back a third time, and hit back one more time. And then it's going to talk about file access disabled. Hit yes there. Say allow. And start recording or casting. We're going to say start now. And now what you're going to see is down here, it's going to tell you it's now reachable. It's going to give you your IP address. And if you remember, we set a static IP. And we can see it is running on port 5900. So now at this point, we can plug the phone in, kind of leave it that way, and hop on over and actually access everything remotely. But before we do that, I am going to rotate the screen. Once again, you can do this remotely if you want. I'm just choosing to do it on the device. One of the really cool things about the Screen Rotate app is that it rotates the display on the device. However, when you remote it into it, you see you always see it vertical in the appropriate orientation. So you don't have to worry about the screen being flipped upside down when you're remoting into it. So it's perfect. All right, so now we're gonna hop on back over to the computer and we're gonna do the rest of the setup from there. I'm back over at the computer and now that that phone's kind of all set up, it's plugged in, it's running VNC server, everything's kind of good. What we want to do is we need to install Tight VNC if you don't already have it. What Tight VNC is, is it's essentially a VNC viewer client. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to open it up. And it's going to pop up this little window. And we just need to put in the IP address of the phone, which is there. And then if you did choose to change the port number, I'm using the default, but if you change it, you could do cool and the port number after that. We're gonna say connect. And there you can see, you probably heard the phone ding a little bit there, basically notifying us that there is a remote connection. But you can see we actually have full remote access now on the phone. So what we can do is we hit home. And if you wanna swipe up, you just click, hold and drag and release, and it will swipe up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to install user land and we're going to set up the Ubuntu server. So we're going to do Ubuntu, hit OK. We're going to say allow. We need to give this a username and password. I like to keep this simple. And so I'm going to do U S E R. Now on this pop up screen, you cannot use your keyboard. So you do need to point and click with the mouse. So keep that in mind. The password, I'm just going to use one, so this is kind of like the default for HiveOS, uh, but it just makes it easier to log into the phones. We're going to enter a password, hit continue, and we're going to do SSH. And this will take a few moments. This will uh, download and install the Ubuntu instance kind of running within the user land emulator. Once the install is done, it's going to land you here at the login screen. Just hit 1, enter, which was our password. And it should get us logged in. And now at this point, the terminal window and Ubuntu is all up and running. And what we can do now is we can actually use the system and install our own miners. So for that, we can do things like the various CLI miner, CC miner, XM rig, various miners that we are now able to run on the system. And I will be covering various miners in future videos. The purpose of today's video is just to show you how to get that terminal up and running on your phone. And it's kind of that precursor to the rest of the tutorial videos that I'll be doing on phone mining.